Hi everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to talk about Paul Simonon, bass player of The Clash. Paul Simonon's place in rock and roll history was assured by a single glorious photograph taken in New York on September 20th, 1979. The Clash were playing at the Palladium, a way bigger venue than they were used to. They were too far from the audience, the sound was poor and for the final song, Simonon decided to vent his frustration on his bass guitar. It's punk rock incarnate. His influence is vast. That out of focus image alone launched hundreds of bands. His stage presence with his very low guitar strap inspired a thousand more. One of the key architects of the punk aesthetics, Paul was among the players that incorporated ska and reggae into the rock lexicon, expanding its popularity. Simonon didn't pick up a bass until the formation of The Clash and was shown how to play by guitarist Mick Jones. Jones had removed the strings from Paul's bass and painted the notes on the fretboard with pink nail varnish. When rehearsing, Jones and lead singer Joe Strummer would shout out the notes of the chord changes to the young bass player. Fans in the crowd at early Clash gigs have said the notes on the bass guitar were clearly visible. While Simonon is not a particularly schooled player, his attitude and energetic performance style create a dynamic musical personality. On top, the Clash guitar work is based on chords, mostly played on the higher part of the neck, leaving a lot of space for the bass, both sonically and from a songwriting standpoint, and establishing a new standard and a new role of the bass guitar within the band. Though he has occasionally been photographed with a Rickenbacker 4001 in the Clash's early years, Paul's primary weapon of choice, and the one he will always be identified with, is the Fender Precision. P bass with rotosound strings through an Ampeg s -VT. That's it, as classic as it gets. And though definitely a peak player, Paul didn't dislike using his fingers for a more dubby tone like Guns of Brixton or Bank Robber. So let's take a look at some of the defining traits of this punk rock icon. Number one, spelling triads. Influenced by the pronounced grooves of reggae music, most of his lines stem from syncopated major and minor arpeggios. The first thing that jumps to eye is the tendency to spell triads. A triad is a set of three notes that can be stacked vertically in thirds. Triad is also one of the most basic ways to spell a chord. And Simonon uses plenty of these, bringing life to the songs. At times, a few passage notes are included. In other occasions, Simonon also spells power chords to create variety. Check out the simple but catchy bass line of Ghetto Defendant, where he spells one minor triad and two power chords on the main riff. Slam dance cosmopolis. Enlighten the popular. Number two, using the fifths. Speaking of fifths, they're also used in a very clever way. Lost in the supermarket, for example, starts on the fifth instead of the root. Bank Robber is another cool example. The whole song leans off the fifth of the root note, creating a very cool effect and adding tension to the part. Can you hear it feels kinda suspended? The bass never resolves on root, creating a feeling of unresolved tension throughout the whole song. By the way, if you're interested in the story of The Clash, you had to check out the 2019 Spotify audio documentary produced by BBC. On episode 4, when you hear the isolated bass line of the Magnificent 7th, that's me on bass. 
check the link in the description. Number three, counterpoint. Another cool little nuance that I have noticed is the tendency to combine ascending and similar descending parts in the same line. The vaguely reminds of the counterpoint technique used by the classical composers. Paul creates short rhythmic phrases that act as a response to the melody or signature guitar lines, using the bass almost like a horn section or a lead instrument. Number four, the punk chromaticism. When we hear this, we immediately associate it with punk music, right? Well, that's because of players like Simonon. Number 5, drop the downbeat. Paul also frequently drops the downbeat of a bar, creating holes in the groove that sets the clash apart from other punk bands that normally rely on very simple rhythm patterns. There's a lot of cool little nuances in the music of The Clash. For example, the way Paul changes the accent in the verse of Train in Vain. After The Clash disbanded, Simonon was involved in a number of projects and in recent years joined forces with former Blur and Gorillaz frontman Damon Alburn. Check out Plastic Beach by Gorillaz and Kingdom of Doom by The Good, The Bad and The Queen for some extra cool Paul Simonon bassline. Two of the Clash's most iconic basslines had to be left out of this video. The bass on Rock the Casbah was written and performed by drummer Topper Haddon and the Magnificent Seven was played by session player Norman Watt Roy. Even if Simonon was a little more than a beginner when he joined The Clash, his simple and effective bass lines have become classics and so has his vintage P bass sound. Besides that, his contribution to the band was huge. He was the one who came up with the band's name, he designed their costumes and their backdrops, and he inspired the aesthetics of punk. It's never just the music. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, leave us a thumb up and follow me on Instagram.